We're right in the middle of our series on skeptics, asking the most difficult questions that can be asked of faith. And I've got a straightforward question for you today. Why are there so many hypocrites in the church? Some might answer, there's not hypocrites. That's, that's propaganda against the people of Jesus. Well, if you look at the headlines from the last three or four years, man, there's been a lot of failure in the church. There has been division over politics. There's been major leaders that were caught in scandals. Why so much hypocrisy? There's a lot we could say about this. One of the theories I have is that the American church has conformed itself to our culture too much. Paul says, do not be conformed. What way are we conformed? Celebrity Christianity. We have leaders more concerned about followers and tennis shoes than they are about discipleship. We need to reject celebrity Christianity, and I bet you we'll see hypocrisy go down. Another reason that there's so much hypocrisy in the church is a lack of confession. James says, confess your sins to one another. I think this is where our Catholic brothers and sisters have got it right. At least they're doing some sort of confession. We're not being honest and vulnerable with each other. But the real reason, if you really think about it, in my opinion, is that we don't understand grace. We even have churches named grace and theological movements full of teaching on grace that are not very grace-fueled. What does it mean to be grace-fueled? I wanna look just for a second this morning at Titus 2, 11 through 14. One of the greatest passages on how we get rid of hypocrisy and do the right thing, even in a sin-saturated world. Here's what the Apostle Paul says. For the grace of God stopped. What is grace? It's God choosing you to give his favor and you didn't earn it at all. Undeserved favor. For the undeserved favor of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. What does he mean? He just means Jesus came. Jesus is the grace of God. Jesus is the favor of God. And since Jesus came bodily and, and, and spoke the gospel into existence and demonstrated the gospel and died on the cross, it has appeared literally in history. What does that grace of God do? What is the appearing of Jesus? What does it do? This is the great part. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope. In other words, the appearing of Jesus, the grace of God, that's what teaches us to say no to hypocrisy even in this present age. What Paul is saying, it doesn't matter what your culture's like, doesn't matter what the age is, the grace of God will teach you to not be a hypocrite. How does the grace of God do that? Well, this Greek word is a particular word. It means the training of a child. It means the warning of behavior. The secret to letting grace teach you to not be a hypocrite and to say yes to the right and no to the wrong is first of all, to become a childlike student. We are hypocritical to the level that we are prideful. When we humble ourselves and say, I'm a sinner, I cannot do this, I need you to instruct me. The grace of God also teaches us out of the position of gratitude. Jesus Christ, it says later in the verses, gave himself. Because God has given us everything, including his very own son. Paul says, what more would he hesitate to give us? Nothing at all. We should walk in a perpetual attitude of awe for what God has already given us. See, really, there's two ways to do religion. One way is you look at the broken world, you look at all the division, you look at all the politics and suffering, and you say, man, I want to control this broken world. So you take up a religion as a bat and you start trying to knock this world into some sense, I guarantee you, if you use religion as control, if you white knuckle your righteousness, you're gonna end up falling. The other way to do religion is the Titus II way, where I say it's a broken world, politically broken, economically broken, there's so much suffering, and by the way, I'm broken too, very broken. I fall on your grace, God. I become a child. Teach me to say no to the wrong and yes to the right. And God, let me never forget, you gave yourself for me. That's not a controlling attitude. That's a submitting attitude. That's a surrendering attitude. When we surrender, we'll still sin, <laughs> but we'll confess that sin more quickly. 
When we surrender, we'll still sin, but we will not put ourselves on the pedestal of celebrity. We'll put ourselves at the foot of cross, acknowledging that without Jesus, <laughs> we cannot say no to the bad and yes to the good. But with the undeserved favor of God, we can stand in every age and live upright, God-honoring lives.